your GM looks you in the eye and tells you tells you to roll for initiative. You rattle your d20 and it comes up with a one. Roll for saves. This is episode 10. Yes, we made it that far. Um, so we had a very meta opening. Uh, this episode, we it's going to be a little different. Um, it's not scripted. Uh, like I said, I'm not doing any scripting here, which is why a lot of my quality is so low. Um, but what I am going to do, I, I've had an idea for Jafing. I've had this idea since episode two or three. Um, I realized I made a mistake during the episode, but I didn't go back and correct the mistake during any of the subsequent recordings because I thought it'd be an interesting story beat. So what we're going to do is go into a flashback and we see Jafing um, when he was young, uh, probably 13, 14 years old. And um, he's, he's crying and his big sister, uh, what's her name? His big sister, Tapa, Tapa is trying to um, console him and you just see Tapa Jafing. It's going to be fine. Listen, it's a great family. They'll take care of you. Uh, they have, you know, plenty of money. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Wells, I'm just making my name off the top of my head. Mr. Wells is is well respected in the community. It's, it's going to be great for you. And Jafing just looks at her and says, no, no, I'm not going to marry him. I'm not going to marry him. I'm not going to marry anyone. I don't want to be stuck in a life like that. That's not what I want. That's not for me. And Tapa is, oh, Jafing, he's already paid the dowry. It, you, you don't really have a choice. You, you're, you're, you'll be married and you, you'll eventually have children and you know your children come and play with my children. It'll be, it'll be great. And Jafing's like, no, no, it's not what I want. It's not what I want. And the camera pans out and we realize Jafing's actually a young lady um, as far as sexuality goes, um, sexual. Um, but Jafing has taken on the personality of a young man and I'm not going to say whether he's really uh, has transitioned. Um, I don't think that's that's important for the story, but uh, Jafing wants to live his life as a man. So that's what he's doing in the story. But I believe biologically he's still female. Um, and even if he's rather on the small size size. Um, so a little background, as I said, he had some problem with his family. So I believe he has, uh, ran away from the problem. Um, did not want to get married, uh, took on the personality of a young boy and, uh, started taking odd jobs around the docks, uh, got old enough and started working as a security guard. And it was probably the best job he's had, um, steadiest job, uh, probably le uh, less strenuous and less dangerous than moving large boxes around and such in this uh, kind of industrial revolution age that they're in. And so uh, he really wanted to keep the job. And so he kept up the persona of uh, being a boy and has come to accept it. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if Jay Fing wants to forever be a boy or was just keeping up the, uh, front so he can keep his job. Um, so that, that one I'm not going to touch. I think it's good enough to say that for now he, 
he considers himself as a woman disguised as a man. And, but he's been in this role for long enough that he considers himself, refers to himself comfortably as a man. All right, so that's where we're at. But Jafing at the end of last episode was very uh, nearly comatose from the alcohol and substances that he enjoyed at the club and the detective took him to her home and Jay Fing wakes up and the detective is snuggled up next to him in the bed and Jay Fing uh, at almost panicked. Well, does he panic? I don't know. Let, let's roll. I'm going to think very highly li likely yes. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to phrase the question as, does Jafing keep his calm? And I'm going to keep referring to him as male. Oh, and just meta. The reason why I'm doing this was when I first rolled up the four characters to decide which one I wanted to keep, I rolled that Jafing was a female. But then the episode where I decided I was going to keep Jafing as my main character I forgot that I had rolled that Jafing was a female and re-rolled and I came up with a, a odd number. I don't remember exactly which number it was, but came up that Jafing was a female, uh, was a male. And later when I was going back and writing up the synopsis on the blogs and everything, I was like, wait a minute, I thought Jafing was a female because I started to get that little memory. So I went back and checked the um listen to the audio again and sure enough i had uh rolled up that jafing was a female originally and then i rolled up again later and said that jafing was a male so we're just going to put that in there um that's now canon jafing was a female but took on the persona of a male um so does jafing keep his calm and jafing's call called himself a male so long i'm going to referred to him as a male. Does Jafin keep his calm? I'm going to say it's going to be very difficult for him to do so because he's applied a lot of his self-worth to being a man. Um, he would not be able to have the security job as a male. The security job is very important for him to keep um, for his position within the Blade Archivists. And um, just the way that people interact with him as a man um, is very different than uh, the way that people uh, reacted to him when he was a female and the way that he sees people reacting or uh, interacting with his uh, sister and mother. So he's going to uh, stay in this, he wants to keep this male perso persona. So it's gonna be very hard to keep the calm. So that's gonna be a D4 and two D6s and uh, no um he's going to freak out uh he jumps out of bed and just uh realizes that he's in um his underclothes which consist of a a long uh like a a long shirt like a smock or something that comes down to about waist level and then some some thin cotton shorts or something. Um, I'm, I don't care about being period accurate because it's not earth. So just some loose fitting cotton clothing and jumps out of bed, uh, looking around for his clothes, um, especially the, the, the helmet. Uh, does he remember the helmet? How, how clear is his mind? Does he remember the helmet? 50-50. No, he forgets all about the helm of happiness. He's going to forget the artifact, maybe. Uh, so he's panicking. Does the detective wake up? The detective also uh, partook of a lot of stuff, but was not as badly effective as Jafing. So does the detective wake up 50-50? Yes, yes, she does. That's two sixes. Um, so the detective wakes up as well. And... Uh, she sits up on one elbow is like, calm down, calm down. What's your hurry? 
Oh, I, I brought you here last night hoping for a little fun. And I mean, you're not who I thought you were, but I'm up for all sorts of fun. And Jafing at first doesn't realize what she's talking about and then realizes what she's talking about and then remembers what he's supposed to be getting from her and uh he's he's having a really difficult time um so can jafing um i'm gonna let jafing take a deep breath and uh make a a study check to look around this bedroom and so he's looking for his clothes he's looking for a way out uh he's looking for uh potential threats and such um the consequence is well if he doesn't if he studies well he'll realize this detective really is just intrigued by him has no idea about the blade archivist or his uh duplicus uh reasoning no he she has no idea that he's trying to get information from her um and jay fing's going to if if he panics he will bolt um just grab his clothes and run but the detective is a smart person and will remember his face and ruin any chance he has of getting information from her um, the blade archivist will have to find a different way of getting information so that is going to be the study check um so does he study and get her um uh insight like he does he get insight into her motivation and everything well enough to calm down and if not he's just going to panic so this is going to be a study check which is good that goes in jay fing's um uh favor because jay fing does have study so that's going to go up to d8 um i'm just going to roll it d8 the the the, the detective's not doing anything she's just sitting there so he's not really feeling that threatened um and he has a chance to calm down. Mm, that looks like a seven. Yeah, it says seven down here. Um, yeah, and the video, if you're listening on the podcast, the die looks like it's on a corner. Um, so J Fing takes a deep breath and realizes that uh, this detective, uh, what was her name? Yuzu. Yuzu has no ill intentions toward J Fing. And J Fing. Huh. How does Jafing feel about spending time with the detective? Um, I have no idea. I'm just going to roll 50-50. How does Jafing feel? Okay, Jafing. Um, Jafing will at least grin and bear it. Um, so that's a, that was a yes. Um, six, four, and a one. So Jafing's willing to um at least experiment in this manner um i, I haven't really thought about what jafing is attracted to so but it's not a strong yes so it'll be good enough for today um i don't know if jafing is going to do it just for the information or if it's something that jafing likes i'm not going to enroll for that so i'm going to veil it out there um, because it's not that kind of a podcast. So Jafing um, calms down and uh, uh, sits on the edge of the bed and, oh, what, what happened last night? I, I really don't remember much of anything. And the detective kind of talks him through what happened and they didn't know where he lived or anything, but uh, she didn't really want to leave him there at the club because you know no telling what the the syndicate people might have done with him or with yeah with i'm still gonna refer to jafing as a him he still thinks of, of himself as a him um even though the detective's thinking of J 
chafing as a female now. Um, so chafing went back to the, the detective took chafing back to her home. Um, but thinking it was a male, um, thinking that when Jafing woke up, maybe Jafing would be willing to have some fun since he's working at a club, he might be willing to, uh, earn some money on the side and had a little surprise when they got Jafing into the bed. So they, they, they kind of talk through it and the detective has a modest house um just a couple of rooms um and it's a pretty advanced society like so they, they have running water there, there's a bathroom and kind of a living room kitchen area great room i guess you'd call it and the single bedroom and kind of a bachelor's pad you, you'd imagine and it says no you're free to go you're free to what you feel you need to do don't feel you have any responsibility to me i i'm fine with whatever and jafing says you know i'm just really hungry right now and i could really use some water they get up and they have some breakfast and jafing and the detective find their way back to the bedroom the door closes scene out and then I'm going to roll some dice. Um, so the detective, because Jafing did not bolt out of the room, um, the detective will make sure Jafing gets all of uh, his stuff back. And uh, study a tune. Hmm. Does Jafing have a chance to use the helmet? I'm just going to do, do a helmet check, but I'm going to make it hard because it's not going to have much of a chance to use it. Uh, ooh, he bottoms out. He has zero. All right, we'll explain what that means later. But first, I want to finish up this. Um, actually, not zero. That's going to be minus one. I'll type it up that way. Um, so if I don't get to it this episode, I'll remember the beginning of next episode. And all right, so Jafing's not able to use the helmet. Um, he does try to put it on just temporarily and starts trying to attune it. And the detective's like, oh, you don't need to wear a hat inside the house. It's bad luck, don't you know? And takes the helmet off. But Jafing has minus um, power dice now. Um, and that causes an effect in the game, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and it's a good effect and a bad effect, just like... Um, having injuries can increase your your grit uh, once you get healed uh, going into minus power dice can be good for you in the long run you just have to be careful not to get too too deep into it all right so what's going to happen is um, jafing will oh i was going to roll Jafing didn't do that. So I'm going to roll just straight D6. Does Jafing get information about the missing artifacts? Um, is Jafing going to be able to weave that into the conversation somehow? You know, oh, you're a detective. Oh, what were you working on? Oh, why were you meeting with the mafia? That sort of thing. Just kind of try to do it nonchalant. Uh, uh, it's going to be a small chance of working. I'm going to say 50-50. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So that's um, four, five, and six. So all the dice are uh, in the upper half. So that means that Jafing does get information. Um, all right. So Jafing gets information about missing artifacts that he can take back to the uh, Blade Archivists. So we're going to roll random. Um, do, 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 do. go down to the plot maker and we need a clue three faction that's perfect so who 
stole the artifacts from the syndicate. Um, I'm going to roll this dice again. Oh, that was a bad roll. I was trying to do it with the die with the mouse flick, but it didn't work well. So I'm just going to say the OK3 corporate. Um, corporate. And which kind of corporate? We roll th three again. Embezzler. Um, hmm. All right. Okay. So someone high up in, we'll say, a merchant's guild. I'm, I need to put merchant's guild on my map. All right. Time to pull out some post post its and hopefully it's not too laggy. There, that was quick today. All right, so there's a merchant's guild, and I misspelled that, but that's okay. Um, they are in charge of getting the items, um, all the artifacts in and out of uh, Optim out of the city. So oh, I'm getting some background. Okay. Uh, don't remember exactly what I was saying. I just had a big pause because I was interrupted. Uh, we're talking about the Merchant's Guild. Um, so the Merchant's Guild's been moving things in and out of the main city here. Um, I'm going to call it Optim. I'm not sure if I named it earlier or not. Um, so the Merchant's Guild, uh, I rolled embezzling. So the, or an embezzler. Hmm. That should be a person, not a thing. All right, so uh, I guess embezzlers, maybe a group working together to steal things. All right, so what we'll say is there's members of the Merchants Guild um, who have been taking artifacts um, that have been stolen here and there and uh, kind of selling them on a black market. So they're going to have a contact in the syndicate and the um, syndicate contact uh, took this artifact and basically uh, took it to the uh, Merchants Guild uh, underground and sold it to them for a large amount of money. And oh, da, 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 da. I'm going to say the artifact. Uh, where's object valuable? So it's an artifact already. I'm going to put it under. I'm going to roll under prototype, and it's magic already. So if I get a six, I'm going to re-roll that. Uh, re-roll, roll, roll six. That's a six. I just said I'm going to re-roll sixes. That's a six again. That's a five. All right. So this prototype is something that is cybernetic, and I have an idea for this. Um, if I was wanting to do a role-playing game based on these artifacts, idea that I had. Um, so for not right now, I'm just going to put magical cybernetic. All right, and we're gonna put that there for now. And so the one person from Merchants Guild bought the artifact from a person in the syndicate and both are off the books from the Merchants Guild and from the syndicate. Um, but the people involved are linked to each other. So Yuzu is going to tell Jafing that the this magical artifact that is some sort of a uh, do they know it's cybernetic? Do they know it's cybernetic? Have they figured it out yet? Oh, 50-50. No, they haven't figured it out yet. Um, so this magical artifact it's like a it's like a, a, a hexagonal egg. Right, the sides are hexagons, and then they 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 come off, and it's kind of like a it's sharp, right? And but it's kind of egg shaped. 
made of all these tessellating uh, uh, hexagons and no one's really figured out what it is but the the guilds have been able to tell that it is powerful um, but no one knows what it is and it was stolen recently from the syndicate mages and she's traced it to the per the person who stole it and they were having a regular thing with the someone from the merchant's guild but she's not sure of who yet so they know who it was from the syndicate that sold it and went to somebody in the merchant's guild and that's going to be the information that they're going to give Jafing. So Jafing will have to take that back to the Blade Archivists. Um, and they'll have to figure out who has it in the Merchant's Guild. Uh, where they're planning to offload it. And that might be a nice little adventure. All right. Um, yeah, I'll re-roll that later. I'm going to roll that up on the plot generator. Um, oh, I guess I'll lay, lo, roll it up now. I have five minutes. So, yeah, I'm trying to stretch this out to 30 minutes. So what I want to do is roll up a location. Where where do they find breadcrumbs to? Because um, they have merchants working within the Blade Archivist, so they're able to get the information and Maybe they already have a suspect, someone who's suspected of uh, dealing with artifacts under the table. And so they're going to get uh, a place. Uh, I think it'd be any of these. Oops, I shouldn't have rolled four. Got one of these ones out. So uh, three, one, one. Residential, uh, residential cul-de-sac. I guess I only needed two is I'm already under location. All right, so residential cul-de-sac. Um, all right, so this is kind of like a, a very nice merchants, um, very nice merchants row where uh, it's not really shops, it's just residential. And they have these single family homes, goes around in a cul-de-sac, dead end. Um, but it's a fairly large yard, so maybe only uh, two yards um, at either part of the, the cul-de-sac, the circle part of the cul-de-sac. And then, yeah, so they're, they're pretty large. Um, so that's where the next next one's going to be, is going to be um, the Blade Archivists are going to try to make a heist. Um, so I'll run it as... A suburban dungeon crawl doesn't that sound fun suburban dungeon crawl I'll run it that way next time um, make a big note come on computer give me a stick tap there it is all right so I'm gonna write here suburban dungeon crawl and um, yeah we'll do a room by room clear they'll go through during the day um, see who they run into yep all right I'm gonna put that right here so I can remember okay so that's gonna be it for today's game um, if you have any questions or comments you can email me at rollforsays at gmail.com the pod the blog there I can speak today the blog is at blogspot.com. There's a Patreon and there's YouTube and there is the podcast. I'm not sure exactly where you're picking this up from. Um, all of it is Roll for Saves. Um, the main feed for the uh, podcast is through Anchor FM, but you can find it most places where podcasts are found. There are few that I was not able to link up to because I'm not in the US and I didn't really feel like uh, installing a VPN. So you can find me on podcast, you can find me on YouTube at uh, Roll for Saves, Blogspot, everything's Roll for Saves, the four is a four, number four. Uh, that's it for today. Play games and have fun. <laughs>